Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Um, I should say it should be an interesting day today. Um, it is Friday, the new month, March 1st. And it's not something that I was anticipating, but it has happened. I am basically what you would say not as keen on being a fan of I don't I don't want to say the the Mets but more so the direction that they're going and the reason why I say this is because Cohen came on board with promises of, you know, willing to spend money. And I totally understand from a perspective like, look, you came in with a team and you want a winning team, but you don't want to spend, go overboard. You want to do, want to, you definitely want to pay for the talent, but you don't want to go crazy on them. The thing is, though, the man basically set himself up for failure, uh, especially for, from last year. I mean, if you wanted to make a splash, because let's be honest, New York, it's always going to be the Yankees. It's always going to be the Yankees. Let's 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 not d deny that. Um, the Met, the Mets are second tier in the in the New York metropolitan area. Unfortunately, when it comes to baseball, I know it's not second tier, but like the second favorite, they're like the forgotten son. So, this is one of those things where Cohen coming on board had my hopes up. It's like, hey, look, we can now finally outspend the Yankees. And to the point where, like, we can start creating a dynasty. He, the, you know, the Mets can be a dynasty like the Yankees were in the 90s and early 2000s, whatever it may be. Um, I thought maybe, you know, the Mets can do that. But that didn't happen, honestly. It's one of those things where it was another failure. I mean, it became typical Mets. Put it this way. It became typical Mets. And so, I don't want to get my hopes up for this season because we know it's not happening for 2024. They're looking to make a big splash for 2025. Good luck with that. Honestly, if the Mets wanted to make that splash, let's be honest... They needed to have gotten, um, they need to have gotten or made a play for Shoei Otani. They didn't even bother to go for Otani. And here's the thing even though Otani was moving towards just being with in the West Coast because it's closer to Japan and whatnot, but I think. I think it's more of a case where, like, they didn't even make an effort. I mean, the Yankees made an effort. Boston made an effort. I think the Mets are like, I right, will just give them, like, hey, we'll give you $200 million. That's it. They had this shot. And they had the money. Let's put it this way. They had the man in capital to do this. Uh... I'm sorry, I'm actually, there are no images of Otani with his wife, honestly. Because, like, I think it, it surprised people how Otani announced it. But, yeah, I mean, the man's going to be, like, worth half a billion dollars for the next 10 years, 15 years, whatever it may be, 20 years. So, phew, it should be enough for him. Question is, is, like, she came on board the moment he signed or, you know, uh, hopefully it's, uh, let's see what happens anyways. But um, back to what I was talking about. Like the Mets could have made a splash, made a play for Otani. 
they may they, if they get Otani, they can get Yamamoto at that point too. But I think they would have gotten Yamamoto as well too. But they didn't even bother. Um, and they could have made a trade for Soto. Let's put it this way. I mean, the Mets could have made a trade for Soto. Now they want to keep. Uh, I mean, it's like so many things are going through my head right now with this, with the Mets itself, because like they could have made a trade for Soto. Uh, they could have kept what's his face. Uh, well, not kept, but more so they could have. I guess you could say Pete Alonso could have been traded for Soto. Because the question is, will the Mets may retain uh, Pete Alonso? It's hard to say because I don't see that happening. I'm going to see I, you. Got, if Alonso, I think Alonso's agent is Scott Boris, super agent, of course. He's going to try to command four hundred million dollars a year, and the question is, are the Mets willing to? Are the Mets willing to pay for him? If they do, what happens then? Snell makes a sense to the point of like the Mets should try to sign him, but reality is he's not superstar level. Uh, to the point where like should the Mets pay him what he's asking for? I would not do that honestly. Like I would build, rebuild from scratch. Then, I mean, I don't know. I'm just like angry, angry to the point where like. You can only take so much as a Mets fan. Like you have your hopes up there, and then poof, it drops considerably. And everyone was expecting the Mets to like you know. I thought for sure like they should have made a play for Degrom. I don't think they took every effort to sign Degrom. Uh, similarly, I think Wheeler. They could have like tried to sign Wheeler, re-signed Wheeler back when he became a free agent before he went to Philadelphia. They could have signed for him. I mean, I think Wheeler. And Degrom together, that would have been your one-two punch. That I think in 2021, 2022, and 2023, it would have been very helpful for them, and they would have been in the playoffs in those years at that point as well too. Um, this is not a case where I think the Mets will make the playoff in the next three years. Unless they make some drastic changes and send some serious free agents, I don't see that happening. And the same thing can be said about the the Islanders uh, as a hockey fan. I mean, honestly, this is not one of the things where I anticipated. I did not anticipate the Islanders to be sort of out of playoff contentions in a ways. I mean... It's it's a little surprising that they should have made it in there, but they're not, per se. The Rangers doing really well. Hurricanes, of course. I mean, they've got... I don't know how many games they actually have remaining, actually. Um, they don't have many, many, many games remaining, so like they're just on the outskirts of it. They need to jump on it quickly. They need to jump on it as quickly as possible. Um, Tampa Bay, I mean, I hate to say this, but like both the Mets and Islanders have not learned from other teams how they do it. Look at the Rangers. Now, I mean, last year they were horrible, but then they are now one of the top tier teams back to where they were again. And I, I, I think I don't. I really don't want the Rangers to win because that justifies Dolan at that point. Quite honestly, and James Dolan is not your typical owner that you would want. Now let's let's look at it from here. The Knicks, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going all you know all over the place. Basically, the Knicks, they are in fourth place. Is it maybe wise for them to stay in fourth place? I mean, if they do, they would be playing the 76ers, and the way the Knicks are right now, 
without Randall and OG coming in. I don't think they're going to do really well. But with the 76ers depleted away and, you know, depleted and the fact that Embiid's gone for the year, I think if Embiid does not come back into the playoffs, the Knicks can take out the 76ers. I think they can get to that second round uh, so long as OG is back. Honestly, I think it's more because I think the Knicks need to reestablish themselves because they haven't been winning as much as what they were. They were really hot then and now they're no longer hot at that point. I mean, they're on a two-game losing streak. The last 10, 3-7, and seven, it's not something that you anticipated. Whereas the Celtics, always going to be hot, red hot. Um, but honestly, the way the Celtics are playing right now, uh, was it 15 games? I mean, I would not be surprised. Well, actually, I don't think they can make the 70, 73 game winning streak, uh, winning mark, basically. Minnesota, Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. I mean, I didn't know how. we. I saw how good Edwards was for the past two playoffs. It's just they were not to that point. So. Edwards is showing how really good he is, and he has progressed considerably. My fear is that Barrett, the Knicks tr- uh, traded OG for, um, RJ Barrett becomes like another Anthony Edwards. If he does, it's going to be very damaging to the Knicks, but... Under the current play that it is, there's no way R.J. Barrett would have thrived. It makes absolute sense. Um, look at the way quickly and R.J. Barrett have been playing as of late. They are averaging over 20 points a game practically So, since the trade. And it's one of those things where I'm wondering if it's going to come back and haunt us. I'm hoping not, but you never know. I mean, look, all... All the Raptors need to do is just go on a winning streak. They just need to win 15 or 16 of their next games, basically. Yeah, 16 of their next games. They're in the plan. If they can get in the plan, they can be very, very dangerous at that point. Um, Pacers, again, I wish the Knicks had traded for Halliburton. I mean, not traded for Halliburton, had drafted Halliburton instead of uh, Toppin, but they got Toppin, and they couldn't utilize him at this point. But it's looking like more and more that... It was good that the Knicks traded top in a way because it shows that he's not the talent that we had anticipated him to be, basically. He was tal- he had raw talent, but he hasn't been molded properly. I'm not sure how to go about this exactly. Actually, wait. Uh, I just realized that I forgot to put on the chat if you are sending a chat to me i don't know if i'll see it or not my chat all messages are visible i am not seeing anything so let's see youtube control i am using uh obs i haven't really used obs in a while that's not that's not true entirely Well, actually, there is not much. Anyways, um, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I don't think I. Need, you know, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do. I'll tell you this: I might create a. I go with another channel. I created another channel specifically for my journey in my weightless journey. Uh, I might want to create one. Not create one, but pivot that journey from weight loss to doing a startup. Trying my own startup and like my journey into creating my own company or building my own company. I think I might want to do that at that point as well too. Um, I would love to know some resources and some get some help in that aspect of like where to go about it basically. I do have some ideas. I would like to like, you know, find that community-based help or support for doing that um where to go for i I don't know if i would want like you know to bring someone on board as an investor or as another co-founder um i'll have to determine that at that point but anyways i'll 
put that off into my link to the other channel at that point. But with that, I'll leave it at that. Unfiltered. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, you're welcome to leave a comment in the comment section when it does come on. Uh, but outside of that, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Unfiltered, unedited, and of course, always unrecorded.